Good morning, everyone. I'm Tammy. I am your host today. Thank you for joining us. We are doing just a live hangout with an open Q&A. I do have a few things I'm going to talk about based on some emails that I've received recently. Um, but if you have questions for us, feel free to ask a question in the chat. We just ask that you would preface it with three question marks and end with three question marks. That just helps the questions pop out to us as Tom is moderating or Jesse is moderating. Um, and we have Jesse here with us. She is in the chat feed and she helps us um, keep everything balanced um, while we're doing these live hangouts. So um, we are all disappointed that Dr. Greger had a last minute schedule change, but we have confirmed with his scheduler that he will be on on Thursday, October 6th at 8 a.m. Pacific. So that will be early for us and that will be 11 o'clock for all of you Easterners um, and 10 o'clock for the Midwest people. And I don't know how mountain time fits in there. So I hope the mountain time people can figure that one out. Um, so anyway, we're super excited. And he felt terrible that he had to cancel at the last minute. And so um, they rushed to see where could they squeeze us in in a short amount of time. So we're super excited to have him come on October 6th. So all of you who sent emails yesterday um, with your questions, we will go ahead and print those off and we will save them um, to present to him. Now, keep in mind, we only get him for 30 minutes um, because he's very busy. So he only gives 30 minute interviews. So we cannot ask questions where it's prefaced with a whole lot of medical history. We need questions that are more general um, in their um, content, uh, because in 30 minutes, we just can't do that. And, um, and also they can't give um, individual personal medical advice when they are doing interviews like this. So, um, so heads up for that. So if you sent an email with a lot of medical history and then the question about your specific issue, um, we won't be able to use that. They just want like in general um, questions. So I've been getting, um, oh, Tom, and I was going to have you bring it up on my iPad. I'm going to have you bring it up on my iPad. Um, so I've been getting some questions about travel again. Um, now that it's fall, some people are booking some travel and they're asking me questions about how Tom and I did our traveling. So I want you to know that we have um, a couple of YouTube videos and we also have a blog post. So actually, if you go to the blog, and put in um, travel, that would be your best bet. And I have links to the um, YouTube videos about travel. So I talk a lot about the road trip travels that we do, but just know that a lot of the things that we do for road trips, you can also do um, when you're flying someplace. So, um, cause we take food with us no matter where we're going and, um, and it works beautifully. So um, there are questions about TSA and liquids. And so um, I will tell you what I know about that. And then I also suggest that you go to the um, TSA website and look up what you are allowed to take as um, in your check on check or in your carry on baggage versus your checked baggage. So um, if you want to take salad dressing for your salads, you are limited because liquids, it doesn't matter if it's food, if it's um, beverages, if it's um, cosmetics, um, it doesn't matter what it is. You are limited when you are um, checking in and going through to TSA to three three ounce containers of liquid. That includes your salad dressing. That includes peanut butter. That includes hummus. Um, I even know someone told me that they had mashed their sweet potato and they were it was confiscated because it was too much like a like a liquid. 
So some of it depends on your TSA person. Some of it depends on how busy they are, but you don't want your stuff to get confiscated. So be smart, be safe, and make sure that if you are taking salad dressing, that you have no more than a three ounce bottle and you have to put that in a quart size bag and that has to go in the little bin that goes through the x-rays um, at the TSA checkpoint. So you can put your salad dressing on your salad beforehand and that would be fine. That will go through, they won't confiscate it. And if you have hummus, freeze it. I always freeze my hummus. I put it in a little container that can um, be disposed of. Or if I know at my destination, I'm going to be able to, <coughs> excuse me, wash my dish. Then um, I can, you know, take one that's reusable, but I freeze my hummus. It also then acts as my little um, cooler pack for my lunch or my snacks. And it will thaw out and then you can eat it, um, but they will confiscate it um, if it's not frozen. So if you have leftovers when you come back, if it's not frozen, eat it before you try to go through TSA uh, security. So, um, so that's my comments on that. Just anything that is like creamy, that isn't solid is... Um, can be considered suspicious for them. So it is different if you're traveling with small children. Um, I did travel with our granddaughter and our daughter, and I think our granddaughter was like 18 months at the time. And so we were allowed to, to bring through her plant milk and yogurt and different things for her. But, um, but it's different when it's a child. And so they just, you know, they'll look through the um, cooler bag and look at what you have and, you know, and then they'll let things through with a child. Or if you're, um, if you have a medical condition, let's say you're diabetic or something, you know, those are different circumstances. So anyway, so there's that. And then I get questions about these bars as well. And um, because I always show these when we travel, these are from the Wellbean Company. They come in different flavors. Every bar has half of a serving of legumes in them. It could be lentils. It could be beans. They um, also are made with dates and some seeds. Um, this one is the sunflower fig bar. It's made with dates and pinto beans, sunflower seeds, and figs. That's it. And these are not super sweet um, bars, which we really like. So, and they are drier than um, like a Lara bar. So if you're familiar with Lara bars, just know these are not as sweet and um, they um, are drier than those. And we like them much better because they're not so sweet. So um, this is one of my faves, um, the sunflower fig bar. It's, you know, it's got all the, the little seeds in there from the figs. And I just love that. Our grandkids love these peanut butter crunch ones and Tom does too. So he kind of, he's like, can you get more of the peanut butter ones? Cause I'm always saying, don't eat the peanut butter ones, save them for the kids. Um, so now we get a box for Tom as well, because he likes the peanut butter ones. And then the almond fudge bars. This is also one of my faves. I like to heat this up for just like 10 seconds in the microwave and it makes it all soft and gooey like a hot just baked brownie. Totally amazing. And if you're making your own soft serve, either in your Vitamix or you're doing scoopable in your um, Ninja Creamy, you can cut these up um, into little pieces and put them in the creamy as a mix in and have it get mixed in with your ice cream. OMG. Talk about delicious. So we do have Tom, do you have well being in the um, um in the show notes? I know we have a discount code. I was gonna yeah, look me, it up. Let me take a look here. Tom's gonna look it up. I'm gonna no details. I'm pretty sure I do. So yeah, well being use code nutmeg10 for 10% off your order. Well okay. Life. Okay, perfect. www.wellbeing.life. So 
Also, I want to tell you, and, and they come in nuggets too. You can get a packet of nuggets, but I'll be perfectly honest with you. We don't get the nuggets anymore because they're too darn easy to eat. You open up that bag and Tom can agree with me. You open up that bag and, you know, the hand just keeps wanting to go back in it and get more and you can eat, you know, the whole bag in one day. Um, at least we can. So we don't, we don't get those anymore. Um, I did take bags of them to share on the um, cruise that we went on and everybody that tasted them absolutely loved them. Um, and they're just a great travel companion. Wonderful for taking on a hike, bike ride, road trips. Um, you can take these when you fly. We, we took them to Greece with us. Um, we took them to Alaska, Canada. Um, they go everywhere with us. Now, I will tell you that uh, I like to extend the shelf life on them. And so when we get an order, I put them all in the freezer and then we just pull out a bar when we um, want one. And also because they're in the freezer, they're out of sight and out of mind. And we're less likely to just grab them and eat them, um, you know, because they are um, a little bit higher calorie um, density. So they're all about 200, looks like all of these are 210 um, calories per bar. So highly recommend this. You can get a variety pack if you wanna just try out some different flavors. They also have some that have cashews. They have a lot of different flavors that we haven't tried because um, we have, our, our grandson is allergic to cashews and so we can't have anything with cashews, hazelnuts or pistachios in our house. So. So anyway, um, that answers that. I think Tom's raising his hand over here. Yeah. If if for some reason I miss my oat breakfast, yes, these make a great emergency filling breakfast. Sometimes you know I'll be editing or or get really busy on the computer, and it'll turn into nine thirty or something, and it's really too late to get you know make a bowl of. Oats. Oh, did you want to tell everybody why you're wearing sunglasses? Um, <laughs> Some folks know, yeah, we can address that. Aren't these lovely? These these are like the glasses. Of, He's such a cool dude. You look so California. This is like the glasses we used oh, to see. Oh, because we are in California. The old guys. And so now okay. I just wanted to be like the old guys and wear these special glasses. Yeah. No. So Tom has had eye surgery. Um, he had this week, he had eye surgery on Monday. Last week, he had eye surgery on Tuesday for his um, cataract. And um, it's this special new technology. Yeah, this is going to go on for a <laughs> few weeks longer than what you might usually see because these lenses I got are called light adjustable lenses. They're from RX Sight, I think it's the name of the company. Of course, they came through my, my eye surgeon, but um, they can adjust them. Once they're put in, they can go in and adjust them and, and change the, the power of them, the correction of them to give you better vision post-implant. Uh, it, you know, up until now you get your cataract implants <clears throat> and then you have to go get glasses to just, you know, wh whatever they are is what they are, but they can actually adjust these inside my eyeball and correct my vision, uh, to where I won't need glasses necessarily for distance. I will always need something for reading at, at this phase of life. So anyway, um, that's, what's with these cool glasses. <laughs> You're going to continue to see them for a few weeks. My first, uh, light adjustment is you can tell. Uh, October the first the end of the first or the early of the second week of October yeah so I have to keep these on to keep the UV rays from getting in there and messing with those light adjustable lenses because that's the light that adjusts them is ultraviolet so I have to stay out of UV no no tanning booth for me this week <laughs> so um, there was a question uh, earlier from Nancy about vinegar that you might want to catch oh, there. okay sure let um, me I'm, grab my iPad here you and, guys and, and take I, I'm look. up here on I call this um, I call this the Reeves window because uh, I learned this from Dylan. And I know it's used universally, but we've never done it this way before. But You're trying it out. Since I'm kind of on and off of the show today, I didn't want to park it over here and be scaring everybody with my glasses the whole time. So um, did you find it? It's just about Okay, so Nancy says, I finally ordered California balsamic. It is delicious, but it is so sweet. How is it compatible with our SOS? free diet. So um, it does not have any added sugar, but you're right. It is sweet because it is um, the uh, balsamic is uh, reduced 
I guess I want to say it's um, the balsamic vinegar is very concentrated. And so it does have a higher sugar content from the grape must. Um, and so everyone has to evaluate if it can fit into their um, lifestyle or not. It's kind of a personal choice. So I will tell you that our friend, Dr. Greger, um, he does like California balsamic. And he said, we should all have some balsamic vinegar um, every day. It is good. He has, I think he has some videos about that. He certainly talked about it in his How Not to Diet book. Um, if you have that book, he talks about vinegar and the health benefits of having vinegar. So um, for some people, it can be a trigger for more sweet things. And so you do want to be cautious about that. We normally don't use more than a tablespoon or two at the most. So if we're doing a salad, I think you even measure yours out. Do you, Tom? I kind of just drizzle mine, but I think Tom uses like two tablespoons of vinegar uh, on his salads. And, you know, we are making those huge, giant yeah, that's chopped so that, salads. That's so that I, that, because I don't self-regulate very well. <laughs> If I if I put a measure a measurement in there, then I I uh, I don't abuse the bottle when it comes to the you have to, bottle abuse issues. I tend to think I just more balsamic would be better, and so and then you get one more little spin around the salad bowl, and then sometimes it's too much. So yeah, I'm just trying to make that bottle stretch as long as I can. So I'm I'm conserving my vinegar with the measuring spoons. Cool, it works. It works. So so anyway. Um, I will also tell you that Dr. Goldhammer from the True North Health Center is not a fan of the um, balsamic vinegars that are less acidic. Um, you know, they only have about 4% acidity where like regular vinegar, apple cider vinegar has 6% acidity. And so they are obviously sweeter and, um, you know, at True North Health Center, you won't find them. Um, and so. Uh, he is not a fan of them. So uh, we we use them. They do not have any added sugar um, and we do use them, but we do use them sparingly. And so um, it's up to each individual to figure out, hmm, do these work in, in our lifestyle or not? So, um, but that is, they are definitely sweeter. Okay. Uh, Jesse says that Chef AJ always says condiment responsibly. Exactly. That, that's exactly what I'm doing with my mesh, with my tablespoons. I'm, I'm using responsible condemnation. <laughs> mm, I'm not know. sure. I don't know. Be careful. You okay. need to be careful, buddy. Uh, so did you see Tracy Reese does Costco with Basil McVinnier fit into our way of eating? Yeah, so I buy the um, the Costco vinegar. It does not have any added sugar. They have a regular one, and then they also have a um, organic one. And the organic one is a little bit sweeter and um, not as sweet as the California balsamics, um, but it is good. And I do, and I I have both of those at my house right now. So, um, so yes, we do use them. What you want to do if you're not buying California balsamic or the um, Kirkland brand at Costco, if you're shopping at Whole Foods or the health food store, or you have an olive oil shop in your community, they also usually have flavored vinegars. You want to look at the label or ask the proprietor of the business do these have added sugar? Because some of them do. Some of them have maple syrup in them or um, different things. So you just want to be aware of that. And you want to look at the label, read the label. And um, if, if there's a store owner, ask the store owner about it as well. Okay. The shop. Yes. So if anyone's interested in the California balsamic vinegars, they are Tom's of my favorite vinegars. We absolutely love them. And uh, we have a an affiliate link in the show notes. So um, that is one way that you can support our work here is to purchase items that you would otherwise purchase and through using our affiliate links. And there's no extra added cost to you. 
So thank you for doing that. We really appreciate that. Um, okay, so, oh, another thing that's been coming up lately is what brand of oats do you buy and use? So um, we get a couple different ones. Uh, we buy at Winco Foods, we are able to buy a 25 pound bag of rolled oats that are organic. Tom, do you remember the brand name of what we're getting from Winco, that 25 pound bag? Mm. It's almost, it has almost doubled in price. So we used That's to- That's Canada's fault. Yeah. We used to pay about 20 27 Seven. And the last time I always wanted to grab it um, and because I can just throw it over my shoulder and bring it out because I'm strong and everything. Um, You're such a he-man. But yeah, it was 47. I went to check on it. It was 47.95. And so we Googled it. And uh, the, the weather in Canada, where a lot of oats come from, has not been favorable for the last two years. And so... So the cost of oats is yeah, going I'm up. I was going to blame it on COVID. But it wasn't COVID. It was the weather. Yeah. It that, went up $20 in like six or eight weeks. Yeah. It was from one season to the next because the, you know, because grains are a commodity. So I'm, I'm sure the commodities market played a role too, because the, the weather goes bad and then the commodity market goes high and then, and then you pay more. Yeah. But <clears throat> my, but I, my oats, question was, delicious. do you remember what brand it is? I do not. And we don't have the bag right now, so we yeah, don't know. I'm in between. Okay. I'm in so between and they and they've changed um, companies, and the ones that we're getting now, I don't like. So I've tried. Yeah, there was a brown. Uh, unless brown. I'm unless I'm grinding them to become a flour, um, I don't like using them whole. I even when I cooked hot oat, oatmeal for you Monday after you had surgery. Mm -hmm. I did not like the consistency. She cooked for me because she loves them. Um, I cook for you all the time. <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, the the brown bag, the unbleached bag, did have higher quality oats. The white bag at Winco has the little for my morning oats. I get the little husks in yeah, it every now and not as and clean. Every bowl at least has one or two husks in it, so I've just become wary of those. Yeah, but it so didn't no. even it didn't even cook up very nice. So, yeah. so anyway, so I've bought, um, I like Bob's red mail and I bought these, um, these quick cooking rolled oats, um, for the grandkids for when they, um, spend the night or sometimes they want oatmeal for dinner. If they're here, um, they love oatmeal, go figure, um, the little plant-based kiddos. But um, so I do like Bob's Red Mill organic oats, and you can get them rolled oats, old fashioned, the, you know, rolled oats and old fashioned are the same. These happen to be the quick cooking. And so these have been processed a little more. Um, they are smaller pieces, so they do uh, cook faster. And then um, I also buy the Bob's, uh, Bob's Red Mill organic steel cut oats. And I like to get the quick cooking steel cut oats. And I get those usually at Costco. And if Costco runs out of them, then I'll order them um, online. And I do like to keep my grains like this in the freezer um, just to prevent one, to be prevent pantry moths, which um, when I was talking to the manager of the bulk foods at our local Whole Foods grocery store. She told me that when you buy from bulk, you should always take whatever you bought home and put it in the freezer for seven to 10 days. And then if there are any little pantry uh, weevils or moths or anything in there, um, if they laid eggs in it, I know it's so gross to even think about, but um, she said then the freezer will take care of that for you. Um, because if you introduce those into your pantry, it is a mess. Oh, <laughs> well, Chef AJ's here. Hey, we got a special guest in the house. Hey, I see her little chipmunk. Yep. Um, I see her little chipmunk. I got it. Uh, would you bring that mouse in that cat's knee? I will. I think she's still muted. 
Hey, hello. Oh my God. You know, I've been listening to you in the car on the way here. Let me just change my name. And uh, I I love the topic and I actually have something to add to it. And and Tammy and Tom are such good friends. Let me tell you, they came for dinner last night and they literally brought it. Everything. She made the cauliflower bisques on the spot. Well, she brought the bisque already made, but she brought her pressure cooker with it in it. She made the rice at my house. She bought cut up watermelon, which is like my favorite. And oh, she Tom wants dishes. credit. Tom wants credit for making the rice. Right. Well, the rice was delicious. There's nothing like, and they made my favorite, which was white rice. And they left me leftovers. I mean, these are the kind of friends you want people. So, you know, if you don't have friends like Tom and Tammy, you got to move. That's what I say. But it's funny because you were talking about travel and, you know, I did a a, a webinar on that. And and by the way, just to give credit where credit's due, I do say condiment responsibly, but that came from Chef Terry, who makes a different wonderful vinegar called Bimon Paz. She was always the one that said that, but I agree with that. Now, all I did was travel 23 miles from my rental home to where I'm going to be living. And you would think I'm going away for a week because I've had a lot of fun interactions with TSA in my life because um, I am very good at travel because I did it for so long, but that usually uh, the cooler would trigger the machine, not that it wasn't allowed, but something about it would trigger it. And it's fine to have an ice chip as long as it's frozen solid. And so many times TSA uh, um, workers would say to me, you know, oh, um, are you bringing your food for the week? And I'm like, no, this is just for the day for the plane. So just let me show you. I'm going to be at this place because a workman is coming. So it might feel, you know, you might hear some noise, but I'm just going to be here for one day. So let me show you what I brought. Okay. I got a box here. <laughs> and Thanks in the box, duty. In the box. The, the watermelon that you left me, I blended up with some ice. So I got like 40 ounces of watermelon juice because I've already drank, I've already drank my 40 ounces of water and my 40 ounces of hot liquor. But so if I get thirsty, I got this. Hey, I ate so much watermelon last night. I had to get up three times during the night. To that's pee. the thing about watermelon. It that's hence the name watermelon. So yeah. then my little I have a microwave here and I actually have an oven here. I just it's not programmed. I don't know how to use it. So hopefully the man that's coming to help me out will teach me. But I have my Pampered Chef microwave steamer and I already cooked my pound of broccoli, but I cooked it nice. a little bit less so that it's going to be very easy to to just heat up. Did you cook your potatoes last night after we left? I, I cooked them this morning. And then I have, I usually have every day for lunch. And it's so funny because Healthy Emmy did a wonderful video today to talk about people that are successful doing this. And one of the things she said is we eat the same thing every day. So for like 11 years, I eat my favorite lunch, was it, which is a one and a half pound roasted hen and yam. It's two pounds before cooking and a pound of broccoli. Not that I have to, not that I'm worried about gaining weight. It's just my favorite thing to eat. So AJ... On those great big um, potatoes like that, how long did you have to bake that? So I will, I put them, I, first of all, I use a function on the Breville called roast. And I don't know why it's better, but for some reason it is. So I use the roast function on the Breville. And so one hour and 20 minutes to one hour and 30 minutes. And I don't poke them because Chef Bravo taught me, you don't have to do that. When you poke them, sometimes they seep and get all messy. I just gently cut the tips off and I batch cook them. So, you know, the, this, these sides, they get five or six on a tray. So I'll eat that for five or six days. But I also sometimes freeze the flesh because, because like I have a dessert class coming up and we're going to be using the flesh in the dessert. So I like to have it in my freezer. So this is my emergency, <laughs> which I, I, it's funny because I almost never eat this, but it's like psychological. Like what if I can't get enough food? So in general, I try not to eat dry snacks, not because I'm worried about gaining weight because I'd rather eat you know, water rich food. It's just better right. for my digestion and pooping and, you know, calorie density. But when you travel, like when I go to Mexico, I'm, I come back, you know, with several pounds off me because I'm not getting enough food. So that's when I carry dried foods. My favorite I'm out of right now is my carrot cake granola. Like I could live on that when I'm away, but little things, for example, I love these. And you get these at Ray. I like those they, too. Yeah, they're fantastic. And they come in brown rice. You can get them with or without salt. It's okay to say hi. Jerry's here. Hi, Jerry. He's so nice. He's helping That's us my dad's so name. Oh, he's such a nice man. Anyway, and he, he knows how to do stuff. So I love these. And you want to know something weird. 
this is going to sound weird, but I was so hungry in Mexico because they don't give me enough food. And so to get enough calories, I would take bananas and I would make like little sandwiches with this and banana. And it sounds weird, but it actually was really good. So I'll have these. And then I will And let's tell people where they can buy them. Well, I'm sure you can get these online. They're Lundberg and they're organic. And they do also come with salt. I get these at the local Whaley's. So, you know, that's yeah, our regular and, store and here. And yeah. And Sprouts has them. And so does Whole Foods. Yep. And yeah, so, I buy those and, too. I like them. And I, I also feed them to the grandkids. Yeah. And it's funny, like Tammy, I didn't do this because I knew I was going to be on your show. This is like reality. Like this right. is me traveling 23 minutes away because I don't want to ever be in a situation without you know, my food. And so I, I love these, you know, like I said, it's, it's almost like a treat because I don't eat these things regularly. So when I travel, it's like, Ooh, I get to have these. Yeah. So I love these and you can get these. And I've seen these in every regular grocery store. There's no sugar, it's the baked apple chips with cinnamon and yeah, target the has them. They're really good. You can get you know them. Yeah. You can get them everywhere. And you know, it's interesting, even at the airport, every airport I've been sells these. And yeah. unfortunately they're like, $3.99 at the store, the airline, I mean, the airport kiosks mark them up to $7.99. But when you're hungry, you know, it's worth it. And they also come in green apple, which is a little tart, which is nice. So I like those. And I also take carrot sticks because I don't always want sweet things. As a matter of yeah. fact, I generally don't want sweet things, which, you know, I love the carrot sticks too. These are great. And you can get these at Sprouts. You can, I also buy them online because it's cheaper because even sweet potatoes sometimes are too sweet for me, which is why I like to eat it with broccoli. Oh, these are super crunchy and super delicious. You, you know, they also have them with like oil and salt. So you want to get one. That's just bananas. These are a yeah, lot. I like fun. those. And they're, they're addictive also, though. It's easy to yeah. eat the whole bag. You know, I do eat the whole bag, but again, I'm eating these when I can't get enough calories. I'm not eating yeah. my food and then eating these. It's just right. this, like, and, and, and they also come in a strawberry flavor where it's banana and strawberry. It's really nice. And well, I haven't tried is, that. Yeah. So these, um, so this is another example. And this bag is only a hundred calories. So this is like, if, you know, freeze dried fruit. If I just like want something a little sweet, but not a lot of calories. Yeah. The one thing I don't have that I love is called Bar Nana. You can get them at Whole Foods and they are dried bananas, but they're not crunchy. They're chewy. Yes. And the bag has like about a hundred calories and the big bag, 300. So again, when I'm traveling, they're the best. And yeah, then, I like those too. I like those because they're, they remind me of licorice. They taste like banana, but yeah. the texture reminds me of them. licorice. I yeah. love them. And they come also sometimes in apple flavor or coconut chocolate, which I don't do. And then sometimes just some dried organic fruit. And I, nice. I tell you, most of these have been in here for a long time. And sometimes I actually have to force myself to eat them because of the expiration date. So this would be, um, all this stuff can get through TSA because it's dry. Yes. So, so that's kind of what I do. And uh, yeah, I mean, I know I'm a first substitute for Dr. Gregor, but he can't no. me too. Yeah, but I, I, can, I can do it. Here's Dr. Gregor. Is there nothing that Kale cannot do? I love him. <laughs> and he bounces up on his toes. He's just delightful. Hey, Bailey. You, that's hey, Bailey. great. And well, I have you, to share. Can I share this? I was going to share this and it ties in really well with what you just um, said and showed. So um, one of our followers uh, sent me an email and she said um, she was thinking that morning um, as she was packing up food to take with her because she was going to be away from home all day. And this is what she wrote to me. I realized that I never leave the house without packing a healthy meal or snack because I don't want hunger pains forcing me to make an oh well choice instead of an, oh, wow, choice. Yeah, that's really um, smart. Yeah, and that was Mary Jo. So Mary Jo, if you're watching, thank you for sharing that with me. I just love that. Um, and, and that's what you and I do too. We just, you know, you fail know. to plan, plan to fail. Especially like you have grandchildren, a 10 minute errand could be a 10 hour day. That happened to me once when I was actually in a car accident. And it was like 10 hours till I got home, till they towed my car, until I got out of the emergency room. I wasn't seriously injured. But what if I didn't have this food? I would have, I don't want to say I would have starved because you can always choose not to eat. But, you know, that's that old saying. Uh, uh, fail to plan, plan to fail. And, you know, my mom always used to say about everything in life is better to have it and not to need it than need it and not to have it. And that goes the same with food. The world is not set up for us to eat healthfully. Oh, guys, everybody at home right now, I can't tell how many is watching. If you have Alexa, ask Alexa, 
who is nutmeg notebook because now you know tammy has made it to superstar status because alexa knows who she is she was very surprised to hear alexa know all about her yeah so aj did did that to me last night at her house and i was like alexa's not gonna know who i am that was shocking so, hey, AJ, let's tell everybody about what you've got coming up. Yeah, I know. I'm so excited because this is something that I've always wanted to do, but I've been so pigeonholed into weight loss and food addiction that it's like, dare I actually make it and eat desserts? Yes, I do eat them, but I eat the ones that I make without sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, salt, and, and caffeine. And so I'm really excited because uh, it's it's I think it's different than anything, at least out there that I've seen in the plant-based world, because it's an interactive class that I'm doing on dessert making. It's a master class, if you will, called Sweet Indulgence. Because people, oh, did you bring, oh, that that's going to be a recipe in the class that was just created. That is good stuff. That caramel nut tort, Charles said was better than pecan pie. And and Tammy even had one bite. I see, I, I'm not like Tammy. I can't even do one bite, but I knew it was good because you can you can just feel it in your bones when you hit it out of the park. And the people in the class are going to be able to do things like that because they're going to learn not just to follow recipes. If you follow recipes, you're just going to always be following recipes. So we need to learn to make food without relying on recipes. So many people are waiting for this recipe. Or, oh, if only they had more recipes, I could follow up a diet, a healthy diet. No, there's already enough recipes. You need to learn technique. And to do that, you need to do it. You know, there's an old saying, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. And what this class is going to allow is hours and hours of practice, up to 40 if the, if the student wants it. And it's going to be practicing interactively so that I can actually see you cook. I got this idea after the pandemic. When I was teaching Chibo classes, Chibo was a division of General Electric that had these wonderful classes and a lot of the plant-based people were doing them, myself and Jane and Ann Esselstyn. And my class always sold out. Like sometimes classes don't sell out when I have them, when, when I've had them even in person, but for some reason, the limit of 100, every Chibo class sold out. And I realized it because people crave the experience of cooking with me and not just watching. And so we, my team and I, we purchased a lot of the classes out there and I'm not bashing them, they're wonderful. But there was no real interactive component with the instructor. It was just a bunch of videos that you watched during a certain time or at your own pace. And then maybe if you have questions, you came back. But the thing is, is to learn something, you have to do it in real time. You can't like watch a video you know, 10 weeks later, and then try to remember what the teacher said or did. So there's going to be office hours, there's going to be labs. And I'm really excited about it, because it, I think it's going to make people better at doing this. And we were going to do this in January. And then at the last minute, I kept hearing from people like I do every year about this time. Oh, you know, I'm so afraid the holidays, I'm going to read because they relapse every year. And I, I realized because after working with thousands of people, both in groups and individually, when I get that text or email for the relapse, it wasn't because they traveled and had a piece of broiled salmon, as much as I don't want people to eat animal products, or they accidentally had a piece of turkey on Thanksgiving. It was always some rich dessert or something with flour and sugar that for some people, like they say in AA, one drink, one drunk, that set them down that rabbit hole till January 2nd when they gained 10 or 15 pounds. And so the idea is, is, I don't look at the holidays as a time for people to be even focusing on weight loss because what, what I've said and a lot of people don't understand is the process of overcoming food addiction and managing food addiction is completely different than the process of weight loss. My goal with my clients has always been to get them through the holidays abstinent without sugar and flour. And one way to do that is to have healthy desserts ready because that thing about fear of missing out is a real thing, especially at the holidays. It is very difficult. I mean, I can do it, but I've been doing this a long time. I can go to Passover Seder or Thanksgiving dinner at somebody's house with all that rich stuff, bring this food. I'm going to be fine. But for a lot of people, they haven't been in the game that long and they can't. And so if you can make that caramel nut tort, that's going to blow a pecan pie with caro syrup and white flour out of the ballpark. So I want this class to be fun. I don't want it to feel like work or a chore. Desserts are supposed to be pleasurable. They're supposed to be a joy and they're a joy to make, they're a joy to eat and they're not gonna have this, the sofas in it, sugar, oil, flour, alcohol, salt. There will be chocolate in some of the recipes but there will be a substitute for people that are sensitive to the caffeine and chocolate like myself. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. And I know you're taking the class and Kathy Hester's taking the class and Kathy Fisher, and uh, it's going to be fun. If oh, Also, um, there are people that are taking it that don't want to participate um, 
in the cooking lab. They're going to just, they're, they're called auditors. They're still paying the same price, but they just want to watch. And that's absolutely fine. You know, when you're ready to jump in, jump in. So uh, with the Chibo classes, it was interactive, but it was audio only. So every time somebody had a question, my computer would ding. I'd have to stop what I was doing, click the button and answer. And it made it like very difficult. Also, because I've been cooking a lot longer faster than most people and it wasn't a level playing field so the way the class is constructed is the odd number of weeks is watching me make the recipes for the week and you answering questions you won't be seen but you will be able to type and then the next week that's why i limited the enrollment because i have to be able to see you all on zoom i'm going to watch you cook and you can unmute yourself and you can talk to me and i can you know because people would say on chivo why does it look like this and i'm like what does it look? I don't know. What, what is it? Can you text me if I don't know? So I think it's going to be unique and fun. And uh, I'm excited about it because it's, it's fun. Desserts yeah, are- I love it. I think it's, I think it's a great concept. And the fact that people are going to get to cook in real time and ask you questions that way, if they are doing something wrong, you can help them immediately. So we have a, a question here. Liz says, my recent experiments have been epic fails. I cannot eat bananas and I need to limit my dates to small quantities. In baked goods, my texture has been way off. Would this class be helpful for me? Probably not. I'm going to be honest because I my main mission in life right now is to get people off processed sugar because as a vegan for 45 years, I realized not everybody's going to be vegan. But I think everyone can be sugar-free because you can make any kind of dessert vegan and sugar-free with fruit. And I don't want to use, uh, you know, anything but fruit. And so if I didn't use dates and bananas, what am I going to use? Applesauce? Maybe it's in some of the recipes. So if you can't eat dates and bananas, I would say probably this class isn't for you because as a matter of fact, I've focused even less on dates as, as I've moved along because dates are still super healthy. They're full of fiber, water, vitamins, minerals, phytochemicals, antioxidants, and micronutrients, but they're 1300 calories per pound. Whereas when I use bananas instead, they're 400. So that's why my carrot cake granola is probably my favorite recipe because it's like so good and it's so crunchy, but it's, it, there's no dates in it. So I would say, no, if you're, if you can't have dates and bananas, and probably if you can't eat oats, probably not, because it's a very specific kind of baking. That's not just sugar-free, but flour-free, gluten-free and um, lower on caloric density. There will be some richer desserts for the holidays. There will be some nuts and things like that, nut butters. But for the most part, it's really a class to get people off sugar and to make desserts that regular people will eat. But if you can't yeah, have that's foods, what, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm glad I, that I, you said that, AJ, because I was going to make the point that like this, this is something that you can serve to people who follow the standard American diet and are used to um, higher calorie density foods because this, I mean, I had, I did have one bite of it last night. It's too rich. I couldn't eat like a whole big piece of this, um, but absolutely decadent. So you could make this, you could still have a piece of it if you want, but just know that you could serve it to everybody. And this is how you win people over usually to our way of so eating. The standard American diet people may love those, but those are mine. <laughs> Yeah. It's my yeah. yeah, we're saving it for you, Tom. You got four pieces. Yeah, AJ, she took so care of you. She took care mind. of you. You might want to pop them back in the freezer. Tom um, looks so cool in his shades. He reminds me of Jack Nicholson. You know, I want to just say something about the lady that can't have bananas and dates. The yeah. class still may be for her just to learn technique and then for her to discover what she can use instead. So so it may not be, uh, 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 you know, something that, she can eat, but, but you, you know, I mean, look, chefs make food for things they're allergic to and they can't eat all the time. So we're, what we're trying to do is focus on techniques so that she can figure out, okay, this is what it's supposed to look like. Now, how can I make a substitute for the foods I can eat? But, but yeah, I mean, dates are incredible. And, I, you know, I think I was one of the first people in the plant-based world or any world, because it's been over 20 years that I've been using dates to make desserts. When I worked as a pastry chef at Sante restaurant, I was using dates and nobody like said, well, where's the sugar? You know, dates are 70% sugar, but they have all these other properties being a whole food that sugar doesn't. And for people, you know, I understand there's some people that would not be able to eat some of these. They're, they're, they're just too triggered by them. However, I would still say, if you don't have this ready, what's going to happen when you're at Christmas dinner and it's going to be worse. So again, good, better, best. If you can't, you know, know thyself, if this is going to be something you can't do, don't do it, but everybody else will eat it. I mean, neighbors, friends, you don't have to worry about that. 
Um, yeah, so I think it's going to be fun because p- desserts make people happy, you know. Um, well, and, they do. And it's yeah. nice to be able to make something that is still healthy and plant based because I like I don't make I don't make standard American diet food for anybody. Um, well, I, I'll, I take that back when I take care of my dad um, and he wanted an egg. I did make him an egg you know, but, um, but I fed him otherwise all plant-based because I don't want to f- make food for people that I know is unhealthy and bad for them. Um, and so I'll make richer desserts for my family. I don't have to eat them. I'll Me make too. something yeah. a little bit less like, yeah, just like you do, you know, um, like we had the sorbet the, or the frozen yogurt that you made last night instead of yeah. The and that was pie. delicious. And, and also a lot of things like I'm allergic to soy. So when I make tofu desserts, which, which by the way, if you're allergic to soy, there's always going to be a substitute for that. So it, I'm not going to eat something that I'm allergic to. One of the things I did for this class, Tammy, is my dessert cookbook, which hopefully will be out next year. It's at the editor right now. And then at the book designer, you just never know with these things is um, there's a, there's a hundred over 175 recipes. And so for this class, I didn't pick ones that required anything more than equipment that most people have, meaning any food processor of any size in any blender, not a high powered blender. So we're not going to be doing recipes that require a dehydrator, that require a nut or milk, that require a Ninja Creamy, that even require a high powered blender. So I, I, I feel like, I mean, there are going to be some recipes that we're going to make that require none of that, but I feel that most people that are you know, health oriented or doing this for a while, we'll have access to any kind of blender, even if it's a $20 Oster from Bed Bath & Beyond and some kind of food processor. So um, I tried to, I I took that in mind. Also, I didn't want them to have to get certain kinds of pans based other than obviously, you know, you're going to need something to put it in, whether it's a spring form pan or a Pyrex, but to make it that it didn't have to be so specific that that it had to be a fluted tart pan. Of course, I'll show that. So it starts Saturday. I wish I could have given people more notice, but you know, just I'm moving right now and I'm actually yeah, you're busy. busy and then I got to fly to LA because this little girl has to have surgery and I'm so worried and we didn't want to have a, the surgeon do it here because we didn't know anybody yet so she's going back to her puppy doctor and yeah so yeah yeah you got a lot going on yeah so it's 12 weeks you guys it starts actually, on 13. Saturday it's 13 weeks. Oh, it's 13 I, weeks. The, the copy is wrong. So what happened? Yeah. It's a listen, baker's listen. dozen. Well, actually the bonus week could be the most fun week of all. So it, it is 12 weeks, but it's really 13 weeks. And the reason is, is because I know from experience, just having run the mastery program that that Saturday after Thanksgiving, a lot of people are just super busy, either with family or travel. So I didn't want to go dark and not I'd not meet, but I didn't want to do the curriculum. So I'm going to do something that's surprising, that's fun. If you miss it, you'll still be able to do the exercise later. So it's 13 weeks. It's over 40 hours. Yeah. So it's, it's you know, there's, there is a time commitment, but I don't want people to feel that if they can't make it live, they shouldn't take the course, you know, because there's still going to be a lot of teaching and a lot of value because at the end of the day, that's what I am as a teacher. That's right. So you guys, there's a link in the show notes underneath the video. If you want to sign up and get in on AJ's amazing class and we have a discount code, Tammy, Mm -hmm. and is it all caps? Yeah. Yeah. Tammy, T-A-M-I. You have to spell it right um, to get your discount. It's a 41% discount. Um, The the goal of that that interesting percentage was to actually get to a number uh, uh, off yeah. So, but yeah, it's a substantial discount with the Tammy code. Yeah. So, so yes, sign 200, up, you guys. 200 off. So it's basically like, I don't know, what is it? Like $22 a week or something for a three hour class. It's pretty, I think it's pretty reasonable. So the code so you, you say you cut out, is it $200 off? Yeah. Yes, $200, $200 off. off. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, yep. It's going to be fun. We're going to yeah. make a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, you know, and it, it'll prepare you for any holiday because that's what people always say. Oh my gosh, I remember AJ the first year that I went plant based, and I, you know, I transitioned like in March, and then when the holidays started rolling around, I was like in panic mode because I thought, oh my gosh, what am I going to make for my family? You know, like like what do we eat for the holiday? So this will solve a lot of that dessert problem, and everybody's all focused on down too far, honey. Yeah, that's the thing with with desserts. People don't know by looking at them that they're vegan or gluten free right. or sugar free. My pecan pie 
looks like a pecan pie. My German chocolate cake mm -hmm. looks like a German chocolate cake. And my chocolate mousse looks like a chocolate mousse. And, you know, having just come back from Rancho La Puerta, where all my cooking classes are hands-on, no demonstration classes, people... I think people need to do it to get good at it. They can't just, I mean, yes, watch videos, watch, but do it. You know, it's time to really start doing it instead of just watching people do it, do it. That's how you become an expert. They say you need like 10,000 hours to be good at something, but wow. start doing this. And you know what, if you can't have it in your house and believe me, I, I'm new to this neighborhood and, you know, I, casually I'd see neighbors and there's a lot of kids and I'm like, by any chance you guys like, I mean, everybody is waiting for this class to start because it, and we're going to be making a lot of dessert. Luckily, we do it on Saturdays because we have our potlucks on Sundays. So I'm not worried that it's not getting eaten and pretty much everything can be frozen. So that's another thing. And, and, and just like batch cooking, I batch freeze things. Like one of the recipes we're making are the cinnamon buns, which are low calorie density and those freeze great. So I always have like dessert in my freezer, not right now because in moving it's, it's weird, but in general, part of my batch cooking is to batch cook things like jam bars and the cinnamon buns and then eat some, give some away and freeze some. So, you know, yeah, um, I like those and I like the cram muffins too. Yeah, no, no, those are great, which the cram muffin was a way to figure out how to make carrot cake without dates because it's it, anything you can do with dates and date syrup, any recipe, vegan or not, but to lower that caloric density and take the dates out, that was a tough one. And that's where bananas come in. And I don't know a sub because ripe bananas are so sweet and they don't have a lot of water. So applesauce, don't, applesauce is good, but it doesn't taste like bananas. Um, and, and actually the funny thing is, is people say, I don't like bananas in recipes like the cram muffins. You don't taste the bananas. You just taste right. the sweetness and the moisture. So I think people need to like, give it a, give it a chance before they say, I don't like it. They need to make it because it doesn't, it's not like eating banana ice cream that it, it tastes like bananas. What about people who are allergic to bananas? What yeah, do you recommend? You know, that is a tough one. And, and luckily it's not a lot of people. And I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. And that's why I take the class and you figure it out with these recipes. I mean, I would imagine if they're allergic to bananas, they're probably allergic to plantains too. Mm -hmm. You know, so, um, but it's not. Sometimes like I've had success subbing um, mango. Maybe. Um, yeah. You know, but um, they're not. I mean, if you get them really, really ripe, um, then you can, you can get the sweetness at least. So, well, it'll be fun about how many recipes do you know? How many recipes well, we're, you're we're be doing? Covering? We're doing four to six every class. I know wow. that. And, and that sounds like not a lot, but it is when you, because you got to realize there's baking time and prep time. And, and you know what I think has happened? We, we live in a society now that everybody wants everything instant and mm -hmm. life actually doesn't work that way. And, you know, I've never seen a single TikTok video in my life. I don't need another addiction or app on my phone, but I do know that my understanding is they're very short, like, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds. And even Instagram reels are very short. And you see these beautiful influencers making these meals and you, you start to believe, wow, it's 30 seconds. No, it doesn't take 30 seconds. It takes four hours for them to shoot that 30 seconds because right. they've done all their shopping. They've done all their prep. They've done all their mise en place. That's not how life works in the real world. And that is why the classes are three hours. But you know, you can take like, like I'm not, if anybody's ever taken classes with me, like the uh, eat, lose weight with a full plate or the reboot, they know that I will stay on until I'm like um, private Ryan, no man is left behind. I stay on until every question's answered. And some people right. actually complain that my classes are too long. Well, guess what? You can log off. You can watch later. But I, I really feel like to get to master this, you need to spend some what we call stage time. You know, that's what they used to teach us in stand up comedy, that one stand up comedian was better because they kept going to open mics. They had what was called stage time. You need some kitchen time if you're going to become a master. And, you know, I've had people pay me six thousand dollars to teach them what I'm teaching in this class for like a, a a lot less. So I've had chefs come to me for the years ago. I'm not doing private trainings right now, but that's how um, it works. So take the class. Well, it's going to be fun. I, I encourage everyone sign up. It's going to be great. You're going to learn a lot. You'll be glad you did. And then you can wow all your coworkers, your family, your friends with amazing plant-based desserts that are still healthy because yeah. they're made with all whole ingredients. Um, just to, we're jumping ship here. Just quickly going back to the travel um aj Lori would like to know do you have to pay extra to carry on all your food when you fly or is your food bag your one carry-on 
next yeah. to Bailey, of course. So yeah. So my trough, my food bag, and, and I didn't bring it because I, I um it, it's one of those coolers, those cooler purses that, that are very attractive. I have one that Sharon McCray gave me that I'm gonna say is even bigger than my laptop bag. Okay. But, and, and, I, and it stretches out and I've got so much in that. So that's one of my bags. And then the other one is usually a backpack. And my backpack is a purple backpack that my laptop actually fits into and things like my glasses, my reading glasses, my book, my phone charger, my phone. And then I also have a fanny pack. And so what I do, I know, I hope nobody working for TSA is watching this, but so I have my fanny pack. And the reason is, is I, I you know, I've been pickpocketed before. Now, I mean, it was in Philadelphia, but I, oh my gosh. I, yeah, yeah. So I, pickpockets are really good. Like they can take things out of your pockets, your, your backpacks, by having my important stuff in front, by important stuff, I mean my wallet, my credit cards, my passport, it's going to be a lot harder to pickpocket me. So I wear that fanny pack. So sometimes they'll say, well, you have three items. So if that happens, what I do is I can hook my fanny pack onto my backpack, and then it's two items again. What I usually do, because I tend to get so cold and I wear two coats on a plane, I like a True North sweatshirt and like a coat because I really do get cold, is I tie them around my waist, both of them. And then they either just think I'm heavier than I am or pregnant. And that's how I get three (laughs) items in. So that's how I beat the system. And I've been traveling for a long time successfully. And, you know, the stuff only gets taken away, like you say, if it's liquidy. You know, hummus hummus is a great area, which is why John Pierre taught us to dehydrate it and rehydrate hydrate it. But for the most part, you just, uh, California balsama goes through those three ounce bottles. I've done them. You can yes. get four of yeah. them. They go through. So those are, those are great to, to, to take through, uh, to do that. So, yeah, I, you know, the more you can carry on the better, because, you know, there's an old saying, there's two kinds of baggage, carry on and lost. And when I just flew to Mexico, I arrived and my bag didn't. And that is the <gasps> scary. Well, it came but I had to wait at the airport an additional three hours because even though airlines will deliver your bag, they're not going to deliver it to another country. So, you know, it, the more, yeah, you, you had to wait until, so you could cross the border. Yeah, it, it didn't, it didn't make it on the plane. They, but they put it on the next plane, but they gave me $150. So I get my next flight, you know, free to, to nice. San Diego. Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't like the worst thing I ended up meeting. I mean, I could have gotten really upset and normally I would have, but you know, sometimes in life, like there was nothing I could do about it. I could get as right. angry as I want. I could have yelled at them. Why? But it still wouldn't make the bag come, you know? And I used to yeah. be like that. I always was like, ah, but it's like, Hey, you know, you just, just have to walk. chill out and accept it. Yeah. And that's what, and then I ended up meeting somebody from Sacramento. It was, it wasn't as bad. I mean, I would have liked to have gone three hours earlier with man on the shuttle, but Hey, you know, live and learn. But that's why the more you can carry on the better. Yeah, absolutely. So Tracy Reese says, why are some of the whole food plant-based people uh, using cooking oil spray? I think, I don't know who, I think because they feel they can't uh, get things to work without it is my guess, or maybe they're not as uh, steeped in the science that people like Dr. Esselstyn and McDougall teach about the deleterious effects of oil. There is bakeware and cookware you can use, for example, silicone baking pans, nothing sticks, nothing sticks. Right. So I'm guessing they use it because they feel that if they're using it for taste, that's 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 not a good idea because it actually doesn't make it taste better. It makes it taste worse. And then you need more salt and more sweet because oil blocks the taste because of your tongue. So without knowing specifically, my guess is because they feel it's going to stick. Well, it might stick to a traditional baking pan, but it's not going to stick to silicone. And that's what I bake in. Also, I find that um, because uh, Hannah Kaminsky is doing these amazing photos from my book right now. And I also find that when you bake things in metal, even if it's non-stick metal, it's going to be, it's going to be darker. It's going to brown differently. So I really am a fan of silicone bakeware and I have it in every shape from round to square to cheesecake pan to fluted pan to loaf pan. And that's my go-to. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Ellen wants to know, will there be other recipes in your class that are not in your, um, in your current books? Oh yeah. Oh, um, oh gosh. I have to, let me look. Well, the caramel nut torch, for example. Well, actually, yeah. You just it, came up well, with that a- Absolutely, one. because we're starting out the day with my favorite one. And this people have been asking me for a year for the apple pie that won't make you die recipe, which not only does Tammy love, but, but the people that come to our, our potlucks for our house when Tammy's there, 
like it's so funny. It's Al amazing. Smith, it's, it's so funny. Like he doesn't even say he, he is the most adorable man. Check out his channel. He like, so he knows I'm going to make this apple pie. And so he just comes with this big container. And when he leaves, take he's, like, home. he's like, okay, I'll have my pie now. But the apple pie that won't make you die is not going to be available to anybody except people in this class um, or, you know, the book next year, which probably won't come out till July, 2023. So that's okay. one example, the caramel nut tort. Um, um, oh, you've so been making all kinds of, you've been making all kinds of stuff. What about the, um, the freezer fudge? Yeah, I don't know if that's in the class. I'm, I'm trying to pull up my 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 curriculum to, because I, I I wrote this a while back, but that's the one that jumps at me. Um, I don't think my my carrot cake is any in any book. I have a, I have a double layer of vanilla frosted carrot cake. I don't believe that's in in the a book. Uh, I wish I could pull up my curriculum. Hold on, and then I can tell you precisely. Okay, so while you're doing that, I'm yeah. going to read Nikki's question. She says, "I see that some people are using." the spray oil to make food crunchier, like air fried tofu. I've seen them do it. Any suggestions on how to get the crunch without the spray oil? Yeah, I've never had a problem getting crunch without the oil, at least in an air fryer. Um, so you could put something else on it. You could just spray it with water. You could put on aquafaba. It, mm -hmm. it, I've, I've made air fried tofu, air fried everything. I don't think you need it for crunch. So the rustic fruit tart is not in any book. Um, the lemon meringue pie is not in any book. The vanilla double frosted carrot cake is not in any book. Uh, but um, um, there's a couple. Oh, what about those it. tarts? Are you making those fruit tarts? Yeah, the, the fruit tarts. Oh, those, that, yeah, those are so delicious. Yeah, um, the somebody the wanted to know if you know the brand name and the model of the carry-on bag that you use, but you don't have it with you today. So I don't have it with me. Don't. It's at the other house, but I could take a picture and text it to Tammy or yeah, I don't know. If I, yeah. I could share a McRae right now. Okay. So uh, the, the not your grandma's fruitcake is not in any book. The ultimate pumpkin pie is not in any book. The uh, uh, what's it called? The perfectly exquisite pear pie is not in any book. So yeah, I would say that close to half. Maybe, uh, oh, the, the pear pie is really good too. We yeah, had that so, one night. That yeah, was really that, good too. So yeah. So yes. Yeah, so um, and and we may just pull the ebook anyway, just because you know it's not the best photos and representation of and, and the recipes have been worked on since then. So yeah. Right. Wonderful. Well, we're excited. Yeah. So people are still talking about the oil thing, and I know there's you know some younger um, uh, people in the plant based community that have been, you know, showing like olive oil, I'm um, not olive oil, avocado oil spray and that kind of thing. And I know that's confusing, but you know what, you guys, it's a personal choice. Yeah. It's just, if you can afford the calories, like, like, let's just pretend for a minute that oil wasn't deleterious to your endothelial. A lot of people think it's not okay, but can you afford those calories? Because that, if you look at a can of Pam, it says zero calories. Now, how can something that's 100% fat be zero calories? Well, they say it's one thirty second of a spray. Can anybody do anything for one thirty second of a second? Jeff Novick has a video, I believe it's still available where he talks about the PAM scam. So that little spray is still going to cause you to have a lot of extra fat or calories. And is it going to be uh, make it that much more delicious. And then you just, you've neuroadapted now to have to have more fat every time that I, I'm not a fan of it. So, you know, but you know, to each his own, if, if, it, Hey, I always say do the least restrictive program that you can do. That'll get you the results you seek. So if using a little oil is going to keep you, you know, eating your greens or whatever, I'm not, I don't, I'm not the food police. People think I am, but I'm really not. I really keep my eyes on my own plate. Yeah. That's, that's good. Hey, what about those little cauliflower crunchies that you had last oh night? Oh my God, those are delicious. That could yeah. give some crunch. Well, they could put their thing. To what I was going to say, oh, what, you know, in terms of making a choice of where you want to get your crunch, you know, we have our completely oil-free, very crunchy corn chips that we make. We have Tammy's mm -hmm. smashed Yukon Gold potatoes that are crunchy. She has her diced Yukon Gold potatoes that are crunchy. So we, we have plenty of crunchy in our diet, but in the case of this tofu conversation, there, there's one, um, we've mentioned it before, um, uh, vegan pho in Rockland, a restaurant, and they make for me uh, kung pao tofu. 
and it's fresh tofu. Their usual recipe is they do uh, uh, vegetable oil fry the tofu for standard, you know, for, for not SOS free people. But they put the fresh tofu in there and it marinates in, in the sauce that they're making and it's delicious. So I don't look to find crunch from my tofu. That's just not something I'm looking for, but I get plenty of crunch elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So, well, we make, we all do the fries and all the right. different things. So, so. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend a bunch of calories trying to make my tofu crunchy. Yeah. I'll just eat it and, and appreciate it for the way it is. Well, you know, Tom, you bring up an interesting point because what we made for part of the dinner last night, I have no reason to believe that it wouldn't work for tofu. So Tammy had not yeah. heard of the veggie crumbles. I did a video with them. I don't know, about a month ago, and it's on my YouTube channel where the lady that is the owner of the company actually made recipes with this product that is delicious. It comes in cauliflower, carrot, turmeric, purple carrot, and beet. And it's literally just dehydrated vegetables with a small amount of potato to keep it crunchy. And we, we used it on Yukon Gold potatoes, little small party popper size ones. And it, we loved it because it had the creaminess of the Yukon gold potato, but the top was extremely crunchy, even after being air fried for 15 minutes. So why wouldn't that use be used, be good as a breading over tofu to make it actually super crunchy and actually give nutritious nutrition from the vegetables? Oil doesn't really give you nutrition. It just no. gives you fat and calories. You know, again, Dr. McDougall in my head, the fat you eat is the fat you wear. So you know, even my skinny husband, Charles, won't eat oil because he knows it's not good for you. Yeah. Well, the, and the veggie crumbles, Tom's going to link to them for you guys. So you'll know what, what we're talking about, but you look up. And I have, AJ. I have a 20, I think I have a 20% discount. Uh, if you okay. look on my YouTube, she says it's going to go till at least Saturday, but they, okay. they are awesome. a lot of fun. But, but again, you know, just realize yeah. that if you're somebody struggling with your weight, anytime you have crunch, that means you're eating food that is not water rich and it's going to increase the calorie density and you're going to exponentially overeat. Just know that, you know, so. Well, and haven't they done studies? Was it at Penn state or someplace where they did studies, AJ, where they gave people like a restaurant type meal where there was a ton of olive oil in the marinara. Yep. I don't and know then, if it was in Penn State, but I wouldn't be surprised if Dr. Rolls wasn't involved in some of this research. But yeah, they the, the restaurant meal had 500 calories more because the marinara sauce had oil in it. They put oil on the pasta and either butter or oil on the vegetables. And then the same size serving of food no, made like the way we make it, exactly the same size, 500 calories from fat difference. There was no more increased satiety. So oil slips under the radar undetected by your mechanisms of satiety. So, I mean, that, that to me, like, okay, you know, I'm not going to argue with people anymore if they feel like they need to eat animal products because there's nothing I can say to convince them. But why anybody in the world thinks they need oil or sugar? Th these aren't foods that are found in nature. Our ancestors never ate oil or sugar. To me, it's like the most ridiculous market of marketing of a triumph of marketing over science because it's just ridiculous. It, it's just ridiculous to me. But hey, it's expensive too. Oil is not cheap. And you know what? When you don't use it, the cleanup is so much easier. It's like, oh, it's well, just gross. If people thought about that, about the cleanup, you know, think about what it does to your pans and your utensils and your plate. What's, what's doing going to your on arteries? Right of you. Yes. But, it's like, hello, make that correlation. Oh, it plugged up your drain. Really? Yeah. yeah. But you ate it. I know it's just, it's okay. very hard to eat at restaurants. You know, like we're lucky because, you know, the restaurant you mentioned, Faux Kitchen and Zest Cafe and uh, the wonderful one in Sacramento now, what's it called that we love? They'll do it without oil for us. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Hey, do you want to, um, do you want to talk about the um, potluck? Oh, yeah. Um, well, so I hope that everybody watching, if they're visiting the Northern California area, which I guess is Placer County or Sacramento County, or if you already live here, we've got people driving sometimes up to two hours, even from San Jose to come. So I have a meetup group called Healthy Living in Lincoln with Chef AJ, free to join. And we've, we've been doing one meeting a month and we have these potlucks. <coughs> doesn't have to be SOS free, it just has to be vegan and labeled. We're having a contest where a, a local restaurant called Salad Works is gonna vote for the best recipe in three categories, actually uh, entree, 
dessert and then salad slash appetizer. And you'll win a free meal at SaladWorks, a $25 gift card. And hopefully Tammy will be there. And Tom, it's at a beautiful location in Granite Bay. We can't obviously give the address online, but once you join the, the meetup group, you're privy to that information. And well, we may as well tell them here because Tammy's going to be presenting at a conference that I'm producing with Tom. They're going to be on a, on a longevity panel uh, where we have people in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and well, no 50s, actually. We're so old now. We don't even know anybody in our 50s. Anymore. <laughs> people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s who have been following a plant-based diet, who look great, feel great, who have prevented and reversed diseases. And that's going to be January 15th, 2023 in mm -hmm. Carmichael, which is very near Sacramento. And we'll have about 200 tickets available soon. And uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Uh, I haven't done a conference since 2000, I guess, 19. So I'm excited to throw my hat back in the ring for that. And it's going to be catered by Zest Kitchen. We already had the test meal, so we know it's delicious, gluten-free, SOS-free, vegan, I guess kosher, but not certified kosher. If that's Yeah, okay. it's going to be great. We're excited. Hey, we have another question. Ariella wants to know if you could coat tofu in dehydrated potato flakes to make it crunchy without I would think oil. You, I absolutely think you can. And the reason I think that is because these veggie crumbles, the second ingredient is dehydrated potatoes. So I think that would be a great idea. You know, if you probably ground up some oats or millet, you know, making a flour out of it, that would probably make it crunchy too. I, I haven't tried it, but I know that, think about it this way. When people make vegan cauliflower wings, they're always dipping it in some kind of, you know, first they're dipping it like in the soy milk or the, the slurry, but it's always coated in something like oats or, quinoa, you know, some kind of flaky grain yeah. and it becomes very crunchy. So, you know, if you just put vegetables in an air fryer with nothing on them, they're getting crunchy. I mean, I do that all the time. I mean, like if it's a, if it's a tender Brussels sprout, it's not, it, it also depends how long you cook it for. Well, if you cook it long enough, I saw some at your house. Yeah. Last we night. have four Brussels sprouts that never got taken out of the air fryer after multiple cookings and they are like hard as marbles. So you can get a crunch if you want it, you know? Yeah. That was hilarious. Yeah. If you leave them in there long enough, they will get dark and they will get crunchy. And, you know, I bought um, quinoa flakes. So the quinoa flakes are kind of like, um, you know, like what they do to the oats and, you know, kind of press them. And the quinoa flakes are kind of like that too. So, you know, you might be able to do something with those as well. And, but I haven't seen potato flakes without salt or oil in them, but so do look at the ingredient list. Um, I actually made the mistake of ordering some online and I thought they were just going to be just potato flakes and they ended up having some oil in them. So I don't know. It's crazy. And, and you know, for people that really desire crunch, know that you can also get crunch from fruits and vegetables, not always dried carbohydrates. So sugar right. snap, celery, bell pepper. There's a lot of ways to get to satisfy that. I think it's more of a psychological need for crunch. I don't think we have a physiological or biological need. They've done studies like people that prefer crunchy people that prefer creamy. A lot of times it's yeah. stress, like people that need to crunch, like yeah. there are people that chew ice, they're really stressed or there have been other psychological explanations for it, but you can get crunch from things other than, you know, refined carbohydrates. There's a bit, an apple is very, very crunchy. Yeah, right. But I think they're looking more for maybe they're looking for more of that, the savory thing yeah. with the crunch and that, you know, they're missing well, that. But how about, I think there's how ways. about uh, chickpeas, roasted chickpeas? Very crunchy. Yes. Oh, I and I, I make those. Yeah. And that's one of our travel foods, too, is we always make those and travel with them. They're so good. And once you've dehydrated them or made them in the oven, they will actually they will last for mm -hmm. uh, weeks like that. Yep. So they're so delicious. All right. Well, you probably have to get ready for a show. Yeah, I've got an 11 o'clock show and I want to see what Jerry's up to and say hello. <laughs> and uh, thank you for having me. And I, I look forward to seeing anyone in the class that wants to join. If you have any questions, help at chefaj.com. Otherwise. Uh, well, thank you for popping on. This was so fun. I can't wait to come see the house now that it's almost finished. I saw it when it was. You'll be there on Friday, October two, three, four, six, well, the seven, six, well, the se whatever it is to celebrate. Seven. It's the seventh. We're going to celebrate Esther's birthday. Yeah. October 7th. Yeah. yeah. All right. Sounds great. Thank you, AJ. Right. And you Thanks guys everyone. sign up for the class. Yeah, I hope you do. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. Thanks, AJ. Bye-bye. Thanks, Tammy and Tom. Love you. Bye. Bye, -bye. Love you too.
Oh, that was so much fun, you guys. So uh, we weren't sure exactly what time she was going to pop on. So that's why I didn't tell you in advance. But that was a really fun um, uh, chat that we had with her. And um, she's just so full of so many good ideas and lots of great information. Okay, a couple more things that um, I wanted to show you. Oh, and one, um, her books too. If you guys don't have the new Unprocessed, um, book. This this book is amazing. I have made so many things out of it. Um, so and there's like um, a snickerdoodle cookie recipe that's in here. If you guys haven't tried it, it is just like two ingredients, date or maybe three. Maybe there's vanilla in it. Um, but anyway, cinnamon, um, dates and oats, and the cookies are absolutely amazing um, and a different texture than any of the others that I've made. So anyway, lots of good recipes in there. So another question I've been getting um, because we have the um, peanut butter banana chocolate chip ice cream recipe on the blog. We actually have two of them on the blog. One you make in the Vitamix. One is for the Ninja Creamy. So um, if you have either a high powered blender or a food processor, you can make the one that I show in a blender. You can also make that in a food processor. Um, check that out. Or if you have the Ninja Creamy, I have the um, similar recipe for the Ninja Creamy. And I use the peanut butter powder. Now, if I'm making it for the grandkids, I'll use regular peanut butter because, you know, those little bodies need the fat. I don't need the fat. And so I use the PB2 Pure, and this says that because it had, does not have any added um, sugar or salt or anything in it. It just contains a roasted peanuts. And so um, I use this. This is the brand I have. It's on our Amazon affiliate page. So if you look in the show notes, we have a link to um, our Amazon page. You'll find it on there. When I originally got it, I thought, oh my gosh, this is such a huge container. It's two pounds. How will I ever use it? Well, it's only got about a third of it left because we love that ice cream. On the, the, it's the Amazon shop page. It's the first one in the little Amazon category. Okay. And then they have to go to click on pantry. Yes, under it'll the, be under the pantry little block. That yeah. Did you there. did you add those did. little veggie crumbles too? Yeah. So you guys, the veggie crumbles that AJ was talking about, they are absolutely so fun and crunchy. And she made us these delicious potatoes last night. Wait for the video to come out. Um, and they were so good. So Tom put those, he added those to our pantry items. So anyway, that's this. And then also you can get a powdered almond butter too. I mean, almond powder. And so, oh, I'll have you see if you can add this to our Amazon page too. I'll give it to you in a sec. So this too is just blanched almonds that have been ground up into a powder. And so you can use this in place of the um, PB2 if you want. I think I got this at Whole Foods or Sprouts. Um, and so, you know, a lot of health food stores, whole foods, grocery stores, sprouts are, you know, carrying the nut powders. You just have to look at the label and see what is in them um, so that they don't have added salt or sugar. So, and you can reconstitute these here. I'll let you see. No, I've got it right here. Okay. Burning butter. Yeah. And you can reconstitute these with a little bit of water if you want to, if you actually want to like spread it on um, you know, a piece of celery or something, or maybe some of you um, eat bread and, you know, then you could have it that way. So it says, put it in your favorite desserts, blend it in a shake, add it to a smoothie, sprinkle it on your oats, um, mix with water and um, spread or use it to dip. So you can dip like apple slices in it, um, mix with water for an on the go almond milk beverage. So, you know, it could be good for um, people who are traveling then as well. So two tablespoons is 45 calories and one gram of fat. So yes, this is not a whole food, I guess you could say, because it has been ground up, but it's a nice alternative for those of us who don't have room in our diets for the fat. Nothing wrong with peanut butter, almond butter, um, you know, whatever kind of butter, nut butters, those are, you know, perfectly healthy. 
but they're very high calorie density. And for some of us, we just don't have room for those in our diet um, because they are just too, too high in fat, or they might be a trigger and make you want to eat more. Um, so anyway, we have that. Okay. More question substitute for the, um, peanuts in what Ellen, Ellen says substitute for the peanuts is the, um, so tell me what you want a substitute for peanuts in if it's the peanut butter, um, banana, um, ice cream, you could use the, um, the almond, or you could, um, leave it out and just have the banana and the chocolate chips. And I do the unsweetened chocolate chips. So Catherine says, is the Ninja creamy recipe with PB2 on your blog? It is. Did we make a video for it yet? I don't know. I can't remember, um, but it is on the blog. So, um, Tom can look it up and link to it for you. And um, let's see. Oh, Carl uh, says that PB2 also now has pow powdered cashew butter. I found it on Amazon. Awesome. I'm talking about this on your screen there. I am. And there's the PB2. Why do the pictures show up backwards on my screen? Well, they're showing up frontwards on, on YouTube. And all the and all the printing is showing up backwards too. That's so weird. It's just a it's going out mirror. There's it's, a scoop. Did we is there a video on this? Maybe we didn't make a video. It's a very oh, oh yeah, we did. Right there. <laughs> okay. It's terrible when you've made so many videos you can't remember what you've made videos of. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, so it is. It's can. did you did you get I'm Get gonna, it and put the drop, link. I'm going to drop. I'll drop the link in the. In the is the uh, almond powder ground more finely than um, almond flour? Let me take a look, and I, I believe it is because I believe it is. Um, yes, I think it is. I think it's more um, powdery. It's not. It's not. You know how um, some of the the almond flour is more. Like, what do I want to say? Um, who oh, more, the texture is more like, uh, almost like salt or sugar where it's more rough. This is definitely um, powdery. So, so I think it is, I think it is a little bit different, ground a little bit different maybe. So there you go. Those are interesting little finds. Um, Okay, I put that link in the show notes. And if you want, um, we were talking about getting crunch from the um, crispy chickpeas. So I have a couple recipes on my blog. The newest one is the garlic chickpea croutons. So check that out, you guys. Um, those are absolutely delicious. And when we travel, I'll make a double batch of those. Um, you don't want to do a double batch on the same pan. Um, or if you're air frying them on the same air frying rack, you want to um, do them separately because if there's too many on the pan, they won't get crispy all around and they those will stay for weeks. Um, I made some before we went to Alaska, we took them with us and um, I just finished up the last of them the other day. So they're great because they give you that crunch that you want. Like if somebody else is eating peanuts or something like that, then, you know, this gives you a nice alternative and you can season them however you want minor with garlic, but you know, you can use chili powder. You can even make them um, sweeter. If you want it to be something more um, sweet instead of savory, you could use cinnamon and nutmeg in them if you wish. Um, I haven't done that, but I've seen online that people are doing that and those stay really crunchy. So when you make them, if you immediately put them into a container, they're going to get soft again. I like to actually leave them out overnight and let them sit in the air. The next day, if they do have um, gone a little bit soft, I'll just pop them back in the air fryer for, um, you know, about a minute. Sometimes that's all it takes. You have to judge it. Um, and then they'll usually stay crispy for me after that for weeks. And then I'll put them in um, the zip top containers and great for travel. You can put them on salads. You can put them on soup. Um, you know, if you can only get a salad in a restaurant, 
when you're traveling, then they add um, starch as well as protein and help make that more filling. And, um, and we can make a meal out of, you know, if we just have some of those an apple, maybe one of my quinoa banana oat muffins, and then we're happy. How long does do JSPs last without refrigeration when traveling? Um, well, I, I always pack them with an ice pack, um, just like I would for, um, you know, a cooler. Um, I, put an ice pack in there or use my frozen hummus to keep them cold. And, um, and then when we get to our destination, then if they, if they haven't all been eaten, then we put them in the refrigerator. So, okay. More questions. Check in, check in, check in. Um, you ever hear of powdered tahini with no fat? I wish they'd come out with a powdered tahini without the fat. I would love that. Oh, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? Um, I have uh, somebody contacted me that has a company that makes um, different kinds of tahini, and they're sending me um, some of their tahinis to um, try. So I just use a little bit of tahini now and then sparingly, um, but you know, some recipes it's really good in. Okay. Well, I think that's about it, you guys. Thank you, Jesse, for being here and helping us. I hope that we were able to answer everybody's questions. Again, Dr. Greger will be joining us at 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 o'clock Eastern time on October 6th, with, which is our usual Thursday day. And so we're excited about that. If you want to get signed up for Chef AJ's dessert class, which lasts for 12 weeks, it starts on Saturday. There is a link in the show notes. Use code TAMI, T-A-M-I, all caps, to save money on that. And um, it should be a really good time. And so um, thank you, Tom, for putting everything together this morning for us. And I'm Tammy. And I'm Tom. And we help you get stay healthy, healthy and stay, stay healthy, healthy one meal at a time. Thanks, you guys. Bye -bye. See you next week. Bye.